that gave me her name and said when I was telling them, okay, this is what my idea is for the, uh, for the grant. I would like for my students to learn not only about Alabama history, and basically at the end of the year, they'll have a book telling about the story of Alabama, and then of course the illustrations, the artwork to go along with that. But then at the end, it'll be more about our own communities. And so they were talking about Miss Frances Tate and tell me how she, um, and of course I didn't know all of this. I just, I just got to meet her the other day. I was in face to face and had a great conversation. Um, and so she is a self-taught artist since 2000. Um, she, and originally her vision for this, I think so, was to get some Alabama a students, some artists, to actually do some of these drawings and paintings, but she decided to do them herself and to take this, this project on herself, which is, just blows my mind. So um, she is uh, very passionate about what she does, uh, as, as equally as I am. We were talking about, I was not a huge fan of history um, in high school at all. It was probably my least favorite subject. Um, but the older I get and the more I learn about, especially the state that we live in, oh, there's so many, since I've been researching this, so many great sites to see that we have that states do not, other states do not have, um, that I'm excited to take my children to to see. And there's just so much rich heritage, even especially where we live. And so she is trying to capture that. And so I'll give the floor to Ms. Frances Tate. Thanks. Hello to everybody who I haven't spoken to Preserve the very first community of the 
ever established in the city of the Cape. Old Town was established like in 1821. The city was not incorporated to 1826. So Old Town is the foundation for the city of the Cape. How can you not preserve it? That was my thing. And I said, I'm going to do this. But I knew I couldn't do it alone. So I put together my idea, jotted it down, got all my ideas together, and I called, I got seven people, seven historical busts who love history and presented my idea. They were all on board, but we haven't stopped since. We came together on the board in March, first year. We put on the show in September. I had over 600 people for the first show. And every show we've had, we've attracted five to 600 people. So there is the interest there. So my focus, I want to open a dialogue, get people talking about old town, and to realize what rich history is in old town. It, it would really blow your mind when you learn all the little things and all the history is there in old town. And you had all these wonderful homes and churches and historical home. Old town used to look like historical history. That's what old town looked like years ago. And you, as you walk through old town, you, it bothers me that the generation, the young kids, they don't have a clue. I want them to know to learn their history and to be aware of it. And the only way we want to do this to tell them. And I want to leave a legacy of old time. A hundred years from now, I want the people to see these pictures. And when they see these pictures, they might not hear the story, but they can see the pictures and they can put a story in their mind. So when I came up with this idea, I thought, you know, this community is sitting right there on the Tennessee River. Old Town, you know where the old state bank building is? In Silver Eastern. All right, Old Town starts the old state bank building and go all the way back to Highway 20 where with, with Lakeside High School, Leon Sheffield High School. That's Old Town. The whole neighborhood all the way back. That's Old Town. In Old Town, we got the two oldest houses in the city of Decatur. The Dancy Pope House, the Burleson of Hine House, the two oldest houses in the whole city. Train Depot is in Old Town. All of these wonderful historical buildings are in Old Town. So I decided, okay, if I'm gonna do this, you know what? We're sitting right here on the Tennessee River. So why don't I do my painting with the Tennessee River water? I said, okay. What I'm gonna do. Just think of how symbolic that is. The Tennessee River, it never stopped flowing. Your legacy never stopped flowing. It goes from generation to generation. So I thought this is the perfect thing to do. Of course, they think I'm crazy when they see me down in different water. You know, they think I'm crazy. You know, they look at me like this nut down in different water. You know, but anyway, that's okay. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, I decided to use the water from the Tennessee River just to think. I said, every time anybody have a print, they also have a print of the Tennessee River water. So that was my thing in incorporating the Tennessee River into my paintings. And let me just give you just a brief history of Old Town. Old Town was this unique little community. It had everything in this community that you need to survive other than a clothing store. We had churches, doctors, dentists, lawyers, TV repair shop, coal yard back then, coal yard, 
We had beauty shop, barber shop, service station. Anything, what, anything you need to survive was in this little community. And we talk about community like 10 blocks this way, about 10 blocks. Everything's in this little community. One little street, I can remember, Church Street, that hub of Old Town was Vine Street. That was the hub. This was where all the most, all the business was up and down Vine Street. But in this community, if you walk two to three blocks, you can find a grocery store and a certain, and, and a church. You didn't, anywhere you walk out of your door in this community, within two to three blocks, you can find this grocery store and a church. On just church street alone, I can remember five grocery stores, it's nine blocks long. And I can remember five grocery stores just on this one little street. This community, when you, you think of it, you have so many, so many. This picture right here, this was the very first infirmary that was built, let's say hospital, that was built in the city of Decatur. This was built before they had Benevolent Hospital, which is Decatur Jim, Decatur Morgan now. This was built before then. This was in old town. Dr. Willis Sterl, he was a physician and a surgeon. A black doctor came to uh, old town in 1900. And this evolved into Reynolds Film Home, which still stands today. It's not in old town, but the Reynolds Film Home still stands today. The train depot. Can you imagine the hustle and the bustle of this train depot? Because remember now, Decatur was the stopping point. There's a 30 minute layover at the train depot in Decatur. And just think of the hustle and bustle that's going on down there at all times. The Hummingbird, the number two, the number three, all these trains coming and going. When they had a layover in Decatur, what would they do? Get off the train, walk down Vine Street. All the white people would go to Southern Cafe and the black people go to the Green Frog Cafe. Can you imagine all the smell, these aromas down the street? That's what happened in the head at the train depot. While we had the train depot, let me tell you about this little incident with this 12-year-old kid. His grandfather worked on the railroad, and he would go to the railroad to meet his grandfather when he came in. Um, 